We run a family business in Korra of about 7,000 acres and it is uh, beef cattle, prime lamb, grain and irrigation. There's two ways of getting into farming. You're either born into it or you choose it as a career. I, I was born into farming. I was always brought up on a farm. I never played sport. All my weekends were dedicated to farming. When I left school, I uh, joined TAA as an aircraft maintenance engineer apprenticeship. But whenever they mowed the, the in between the runways at Tullamarine Airport, I could smell the mowed grass and I just wanted to be home. So uh, when Dad said, um, are you ready to come home? I said, I'll be there tomorrow. This is one of the most heavily cleared areas of New South Wales and the property uh, hadn't had much sort of revegetation work done with it. So that's when I started to plant in areas that would not be affected by our farming operations. I thought I'd deterred the kids a little bit because at a young age they were out there helping me plant trees. <laughs> yeah, look, I suppose you cherish every part of your childhood out, out on the farm and um, re-veg work was a big part of our childhood. You never really knew why you were out in the field, you didn't have that perspective. But certainly, you know, coming forward 25 years from when, when that started, um, you can see why we were out there. The rewards are just enormous. The, the attractiveness of the place, the amount of bird life that we have, and, uh, and also the, uh, the shelter for crops and, and stock. Shelter belts or what are typically sort of linear revegetated areas are really important for shelter for your livestock. Taking that wind chill down and increasing lamb survivability, giving them somewhere to, to get out of those harsh cold winds on a, on a cold winter's day. At, at first I thought that the trees might have an adverse effect on the cropping side of the uh, uh, operation, taking moisture out of the soil. But the bigger advantage of the trees is that it breaks up the wind velocity. So you, you can see up to 100 metres into the paddock downwind of the trees that the crops looked a lot healthier than actually uh, the rest of the paddock. So reducing that wind velocity was greatly important in the productivity of the property. It's been very strategic about how we've re-vegged the farm, you know, the best, best bang for buck. With the larger equipment, I found that the corners of the paddocks were being underutilised for cropping, so that gave me a great opportunity to plant trees in corners of paddocks. Nearly every fence line has a tree, uh, tree line along it, and then some areas that were just too rocky or, or too hard to farm, we also planted. Tree lines or shelter belts aren't a new concept. Traditionally, we would have done heavily eucalypt-dominated plantings, very high stem density, but we've now come to appreciate that, that having about 75 to 80 per cent shrubs is, is much better for biodiversity. You're providing a lot of food resources, sheltering opportunities for a lot of the smaller birds, things like yellow thornbills and diamond firetails, but also does a much better job of breaking up that wind there's also huge pollination benefits. Having that woody vegetation is, is really important for providing alternative hive locations for things like the European honeybee, but also a big swag of native pollinators. Looking across the farm now, you can see, um, you know, there's these beautiful tree belts that are providing biodiversity. Bird life has increased enormously. You see enormous amount of birds of prey resting in these trees looking for mice to go and pick out of the paddocks. Those win-win situations for production and wildlife conservation are ones that should be capitalised on. Not everything will work on every farm, but there is something that every farm can do. Our son, when he took over the farm, he also wanted to continue the revegetation work that I had started many years ago. And so every year he says, um, you know, Dad, what, where, where are we going to plant next? You never know what the next generation's going to bring. Um, having a one-year-old um, now, I would like to think that we're, you know, putting our best foot forward for the next generation and for the longevity of the environment.